Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon. My name is Margo Morriso, and I have been co-chair of the Payday Lending Reform Coalition now for 13 years. Um, so this has been a long time coming. You might even call it today's vote a historic vote. And we are at the end of session, and we're doing every, everything we can to urge the Senate that the time is now that this vote on payday lending reform will help so many Rhode Islanders. This will help families have greater economic security, greater mental health because they won't have to worry about these predatory loans hanging over their head, and it will be an economic boost to our communities because we know that millions of dollars leave Rhode Island every year to these out-of-state, offshore payday lending companies. It is not fair to Rhode Island to keep these payday lending companies draining millions out of our community at 260% APR. We know that there's many alternative products now that provide great options, and today we're going to talk about some of those things. Um, we're going to have a shortened uh, program, and try to speed up because we know there's a lot of committee votes, and ironically, at this very minute, the House Corporations is voting on the payday lending reform bill. Um, so we're hoping that by the end of this press conference, we will have some good news to share with you all. Uh, so first, I want to welcome Secretary, Stra Secretary of State Greg Amore, who has been a yes, I will be there guy since the very beginning, and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, so, so as Mario mentioned, uh, from the moment I entered the House uh, 11 years ago, I signed on to what was then Representative Barros' payday lending uh, bill, and then supported by my colleague, uh, uh, Representative Alzate. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it's time. It, it's time that we join the other 18 states plus the District of Columbia in banning this pred predatory practice. Uh, it's, uh, as Mario pointed out, there are, there are other options. Uh, th this, this is unnecessary at this point. And so, you know, we look at this from a personal perspective, but as Secretary of State, uh, I'm able to look at it uh, through a business lens as well. Uh, the Department of State manages the business registry in this state, and we know that, you know, in order to start and maintain your business, you have to have good credit. And uh, folks that get caught up into this cycle uh, of predatory lending, and then can, predatory lending and then cannot get out of that cycle have a difficult time maintaining their business or even starting a business. And we should be promoting uh, our, our entrepreneurs, our folks who, who want to take their passion and run with that passion and not have these obstacles in their way from finding that success that then leads to employment of, of their community. It's, it's, it's an incredible barrier that does not have to exist. And I guess that's the message uh, that I'm sending today. It's time to take down this barrier that, that we know, and we know because it does not exist in these 18 states in the District of Columbia, and we know that there are alternatives. So I'm, I'm proud to be here as a general officer, as someone who knows the impact uh, that it has, uh, that, that payday lending has on our future business owners and even our current uh, business owners to support this legislation and say once again, it is time. So thank you very much. I'd also like to mention that the work of this payday lending reform bill is also supported by um, General Treasurer James Diosa, who was sorry that he could not be here today, uh, by the Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, and by the Attorney General, um, I'm blanking on his name, Peter, 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 <laughs> Peter Narona, I can't believe I just that. <laughs> Peter Narona has also been very supportive this year, so we thank you so much, Secretary Mori. Uh, next, we're going to invite Representative Karen Alzate, who has been our fearless leader in the House this year. And when we asked her to step up to this task, we were very honest with saying this is not going to be easy. This is a fight. And she still was right there and saying, let's do this. So I appreciate you, and we invite you to say some words. A little shorty over here. <laughs> So thank you all so much for being here. I know this is super short notice. I, I myself have to run to committees, but um, I remember talking about this bill for a bit uh, when um, my colleague Red Barrels had it, and it was, it was a great bill, and we understood why. 
Um, and then uh, when he was uh, not here this year and um, Margo and the coalition approached me about this bill, I said, absolutely. Um, I know exactly why these things are super important and why people need money. I totally get it. First generation, we don't have, you know, I didn't grow up with financial literacy. Um, and I'm learning it now as an adult, as so many of us are. So I understand why these, um, these kinds of businesses are in communities like mine and why they prey on families like mine and people in my community. However, this bill well, is still really hard. So you know, I'm, I'm really excited that the committee is happening right now. I know that we, are, um, we do have the votes in the committee. I'm super excited for it to get on the floor because I'm feeling really positive. And being able to work with the speaker and his team to make him fully understand Understand that even though I was willing to do a compromise there were certain things I was not willing to compromise and so so far the bill is just the way that we want it and we hope that it's going to stay that way when it comes to the floor for 13 I'm learning a lot about the history so for 13 years I know that the coalition and many other reps who are no longer here have been uh, fighting to reform this predatory practice that has caused financial harm to thousands of low-income and vulnerable Rhode Islanders this is also young people who have not had any credit and maybe you know, are, are trying to get their first car or their first apartment. So everything from an 18 year old to our elderly who we know are not, um, they can't live off what, what they receive from whether they have retirement or social security or any other means. This has been a particularly serious issue in regards to our black and brown um, and low income populations that have been financially preyed upon for years while also being denied access to traditional banking services and credit. I'm very happy to say that banking has come a long way. We know that banking has not always been for everybody, especially for my community and people who look like me. We've, and because of that, we've made a lot, of prog a lot of progress. So we're super, super excited about that. We have small credit unions who are teaching their consumers and their customers about uh, financial literacy, that are teaching them about community building, about making sure that they are able to provide a service that their community, wherever they are, they'll need it and they're able to grow their credit. There are now multiple alternative financial products that will allow our low-income residents to access um, credit that make, that, ends, that make ends meet without being subjected to enormous and dangerous interest rates. Much of this is also done in one language, so whenever uh, you have somebody that does not speak English, then they don't fully understand what they're getting themselves into, but they know that they're going to be able to get the money right away. They're going to be able to pay that bill. That's all that they're thinking about. They're not paying attention to these interest rates. They're not paying to the restrictions that are being put on them. Whenever well, Majority of us get paid every 15 days. Majority of these predatory lenders, the fine print says, you have to pay this back in 13 days. In 13 days, I still don't have that money to pay it back. Payday lenders should be treated the same, uh, the same and be subject to the rules of small lenders. Absolutely. We have to protect our most vulnerable residents, and in order to do this, pay, payday lending reform is desperate, desperately needed. I'm feeling very hopeful. I know I've been um, lucky to be working with Senator Quesada on this issue. I know that she is also very passionate about this. We represent communities that continuously are being attacked uh, by, by this uh, predatory lending, and I'm really excited that it's coming to the floor. Where I please, please make a big push to get it into the Senate, but I'm super excited to be working with all of you. Thank you all so much for your support. Okay, next up we're going to have Senator Casada come say a couple words, and we thank you for your leadership in being fearless about championing this in the Senate. Well, good afternoon, and thank you so much for the great work you guys done this year. You know, I have to say that when I came to the Senate six, almost seven years ago, Senator Matt used to put this legislation, and when he um, lost, he came to me and he said, Senator Quesada, please don't let it die. And I promised him that I will keep this bill alive, and that's what I've done. Uh, so far. Unfortunately, I'm so happy to hear this afternoon that they, finally the House is going to move this bill to the floor. Unfortunately, I don't see that possibility going to the Senate because they, don't even, they didn't even put it on committee this year. And I feel so sad about it because I think this is the time. Enough is enough. It being a bill that's been there for so long, we need to do this. It's, it's something we needed to do with 
many years ago. And I don't see why the Senate don't see the urgent in this, in this matter. And I wanted to thank uh, the advocate because without you, uh, this would not happen. For a few years, this bill was almost, nobody was talking about it. I remember one day I went to Senator Picard and I said, can you sign this bill for me? And he said, hey, I've been seeing this bill for the last 20 years. And I was so sad to hear that. And he said, no, I don't want to sign it because it's been on for so long and it's not going anywhere. And that day I got very down, I felt very depressed. But then all the advocates came to me and I feel like, oh no, we can do it. And, and that's something I have to really appreciate, the hard work you guys done uh, with this legislation. And to see coming out from the House today that I hope it go through the floor, and I'm sure if it's sent through the floor, it will pass. Because so many people who already know this is, this is a legislation that needs to be done, yesterday, and we need to do the Senate and the House, and I call the Senate President and all the leaders on my side to please do the Senate. We still have time. We are going to be here until this week. We still can do it. If the House send it to us, that's sending us a message, the Senate do need to do our part. I don't want to repeat everything that just already been said, how this affects especially uh, communities of color who are, are the most vulnerable when they need money. Sometimes the car broke down and they need $500 right away and they only see this only way to do it. But we need to teach our community and we need to teach our banking community how to help this uh, community to get help. Then thank you so much. Thank you for bringing this together. Thank you to the advocate. Thank you to my colleague, Kari Alsate. A brief applause for her, for the, her work, her great work that she did on the house. And we hope the Senate do the same. Thank you. As I mentioned, working on this bill has been very hard work and I could not do it alone. This takes a coalition and sometimes it takes uh, somebody who I can depend on, who can talk me off the ledge and keep encouraging me. And this year I've uh, had the pleasure of having Alan Krinsky as my co-chair and uh, really supporting the work and helping strategize and think everything through. And I'm so grateful to him and I Love it. If you can say some words. Thank you, Melody. Good afternoon. I'm Quincy. I'm the Director of Research and Fiscal Policy at the Economic Progress Institute. Uh, the payday lending industry and other predatory lenders would have you believe that they're helping people. But the industry does not survive because people in need come to them, take out one emergency loan, and then pay it back right away and, and, and go home. Their business model works only because people come back again and again to take out additional loans, not additional money, additional loans to pay back the first loan. And so that's the only way their profit model, their business model works, by taking the repeated loans, paying triple digit interest rates in the process, getting caught up in a cycle, cycle of debt, which lessens their ability to pay their bills and can result in being faced with overdraft charges, closed bank accounts, and bankruptcy. The Rhode Island Department of Business Regulation data show that from 2008 through 2021, there were over $940 million in payday loans made. For Rhode Islanders, almost a billion dollars. Tens of thousands of loans each year. I guess not really tens of thousands of new loans. A lot of those loans are just the same money being borrowed again and again, each time for a new fee to pay off the previous loan. So it's no wonder the industry has fought against reform all these years, spending tens of thousands of dollars in lobbying costs each year. In 2018 alone, we know the payday lenders raised $7.5 million in fees from Rhode Islanders. Former borrowers report better, cheaper, and safer low interest alternatives. Such alternatives include small loans. Now six of the largest eight banks in the country, including Bank of America and Wells Fargo, offer small, um, small loans at lower interest rates. Number of credit unions, including some in Rhode Island, do, and there are other institutions. Um, other alternatives include things like that former bars reported, negotiating uh, payment plans with utilities or other creditors. Um, and listen, during COVID, we've seen a number of, number of people seeking food assistance increase. When people are hungry and in need, we don't say, let's sell the tainted food at a lower cost, because otherwise they would go hungry and starve. You know, we come up with other options. And that's what payday loans are like. It's like giving poison food to people. 
giving people harmful product while claiming to help them, and extracting money from them all the while. Finally, I want to say that last year, the General Assembly passed the governor's proposal to reduce the maximum interest rate on delinquent tax payments from 18% to 12%, so from 18 to 12%. At the time, the governor and the then Secretary of Commerce indicated that 18% for these delinquent tax payments was near usurious rates, and they couldn't be tolerated. Um, it was near usurious to help small business owners and others. But if we don't tolerate 18% for that, then how can we continue to tolerate 260% for the lowest income Rhode Islanders? So it's time for policymakers to act, and I think we're here because, like Senator Dunn said, it's late in the session, but the opportunity is still there for the Senate to act and um, for lawmakers to pass payday lending reform this year. Thank you. For years prior, uh, our next speaker was by my side as our co-chair, and I so appreciate her for all the years of fearless leadership and keeping me with my head on my shoulders. Uh, so I would like to introduce Reverend Donnie Anderson. Thank you, Margo. And I mean, if, if kudos are going around to anybody, it ought to be to Margo who uh, for so long has been championing this and uh, standing for this issue. I'm here today because the uh, Rhode Island Coalition to Reduce Poverty, uh, the Interfaith Coalition, uh, has taken a stand against payday lending and for this legislation for years, and they asked for a faith leader to come and represent a faith perspective regarding payday lending. And you got stuck with me, so I apologize for that. But seeing you're getting a faith perspective, I'm gonna pretend I'm in the pulpit on Sunday morning. So that's what you're going to get. Because my friends, in the Bible, there are over, over 2,000 passages that talk about God siding with the poor and the oppressed. And please make no mistake, payday lending is pure, unadulterated, legal oppression of some of the most poor, some of the poorest and most vulnerable people in our society. A number of years ago, when some of the folks from the payday lending industry were here, and by the way, what I'm going to say now about payday lenders, I'm not talking about those folks in the front lines in some of these shops, okay? I'm not talking about that. I think some of those people are victimized just as much as uh, the clients. I'm talking about those people who really make super money from these payday lending uh, operations. And I use the term loan sharks, and they were offended. We're not loan sharks. We don't go out and break people's bones if they don't um, pay their loans. Let me tell you what they do, do, though. About seven or eight years ago, I had the privilege of going with one of our pro bono lawyers for the coalition to meet with someone who had taken out payday loans. Now, she would not tell me her name. We had to meet with her in her office, and I was sworn to secrecy to never reveal what she looks like or her name, but I could tell her story. And she told the story about her adult son who got into financial difficulty. And the son came and said, Mom, will you please help me? Will you please co-sign this payday loan? And because of that interest in helping her son, she got caught up in that cycle of debt that Alan talked about just a minute ago. And things got worse and worse and worse. She was in tears and she said to me, I had a checking account at a bank you all know here in Rhode Island for decades. And they, had to, they took my checking account away because I just couldn't get out of the cycle of debt. Oh no, these loan sharks, uh, excuse me, we don't want to call them loan sharks, so let's call them what they are, white collar gangsters. These white collar gangsters are not gonna break anybody's bones, but they have no problem taking people's stability away from them, putting them in emotional trauma. This woman was scared to death 
that I would ever say her name lest there would be some sort of retribution for her because that's the whole system that she was exposed to in payday lending. My friends, the Hebrew prophets spoke about this over and over and over again. They talked about the evils of a few people gathering a lot of money together and using their resources to take advantage of the multitudes who didn't have a lot and to exploit them for their own gain. That is what payday lenders are. And I certainly hope, so grateful for what it might and probably is going to happen in the House, but we certainly hope something will happen in the Senate. Send a message to these white-collar gangsters that you are not welcome in Rhode Island. That doesn't make you want to do something about this. I don't know what would. As I look around the room today, there I see so many faces from people who have been a part of the coalition for years. Some of them have just joined us in recent times, but they have put so much passion and energy into this work. And I just wanted to say a thank you to all of you in this room that have really worked so hard to fix this broken problem. And we all have stories about somebody we know, somebody who's told us in confidence about their struggle being caught in the debt trap of a payday loan. That's how I got involved with this in the first place. There was a payday lending company that was targeting affordable housing neighborhoods in my community in Woonsocket, and people were losing their homes over this. People were losing their houses because that payday loan became such a burden and they harass you, and they threaten you, and they call your employer, and they put big orange stickers on the door of your house or your apartment. It's an evil, evil practice. And so I want to just thank you all for, for showing up to this today. Um, so finally, I'm going to invite Wayona Nelson Davies up, who has been an inspiration to me for many, many years. And I'm hoping she's going to share some good news with us. Thank you, Margo, and thank you, Reverend Anderson, for those powerful words. Um, thank you all for joining us. It's a busy time in the session, and so I'm happy you could make it. Um, thanks to Se Se um, Secretary Amore, who had a leave for joining us here today. I do come bearing good news. The House Operation Committee have just passed Representative Azante's Bill 721, so it's now on the committee. And all to the House today. Uh, Representative Azante had to leave, but she is a true champion um, for communities that have needed someone to fight this to end predatory lending in Rhode Island. And we are happy she took on that charge. Um, we've come this far because of her advocacy and leadership. We are also thankful to Representative Lombardi and other co-sponsors that stood with her during this time. And now the torch has been passed over to the Senate and we have Senator Gazzara ready to take on that torch. She is our Senate champion, and we hope we can get a hearing and vote in the Senate now that the House has spoken. I want us to understand that payday loan industry have been targeting our Black, Latino, and low-income communities with these outrageous rates and long-term um, debt for far too long. We are talking about interest rate as high as 260%. I'm protected from that. These communities need as much protection. And so I'm here today to send a message to our leaders that we say no more. No more targeting our low income neighbors. No more needless debt for our families when there, there are better options that already exist. No more inaction by our General Assembly for over 15 years, when we know the harm paid in any industry causes. The House um, Corporations Committee have spoken, and they have voted no more. We ask the Senate to vote no more. We are sending that message now, that this reform will save Rhode Islanders more than $7.5 million a year in fees. And I join you all today because we can leave from here right now, we're in the State House. Let's call on the Senate's President, Rogerio, to let this legislation have a hearing and come to a vote. 
The session is ending. There is no more excuses. We ask him to please listen and do what is right by our honors. Thanks to Margo, to Alan, and all members of the Rhode Island Coalition for a Paid Day Reform who are here today, including Pat Crowley from AFL-CIO, the Working Families Party, Jim Benson, who's staying by us when it comes to advocating for communities. We thank you for your tireless advocacy. We are not giving up, and we are not going anywhere. For over a decade, we have been asking to end these practices. We have overwhelming support from residents. We have overwhelming support from legislators. I ask us today, let's contact these leaders, let's contact the members of the Senate to do the right thing. Take a stand and say no more. It is time, it is past time to end predatory lending practices in Rhode Island. Let's go and do what's right. No more. Thank you, House Committee, for voting this out. We are happy to take any questions if anybody has any. Yes. Uh, Ms. Warsaw, what, what committee is this being passed to in the Senate, or where is it sitting in the Senate right now? So in the Senate, it is in corporate Commerce, 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 Commerce Committee. Commerce, Commerce Committee in the Senate, Corporations Committee in the House. <coughs> and we really need to call on the Senate President to allow the, the committee to vote. And are we aware who voted against it in the, uh, in the House? In the House, Representative Edwards voted against it. No, no not Edwards, that's what I... Kennedy. 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 Okay, sorry, I got wrong information. Representative Kennedy voted against it. Margo, this bill would a bar payday lending in Rhode Island, is that correct? That is not correct. It, what it does is it takes the special carve out that the payday lenders received um, and it makes them play by the same rules as all the other small dollar lenders in Rhode Island. So payday lenders can still operate under the 36% statute with this bill. And there are many lenders that do so and make plenty of money on it. Um, what the payday lenders do who charge 260% APR is just pure greed. What's your explanation? You've been at this for 13 years. Why, what's your explanation for why this is moving forward in the House this year? We really think it's due to the leadership of Representative Alzate and how hard she's advocated for this. Um, we also have a reinvigorated coalition who has been very active in sending in emails and action alerts and making phone calls. So the collective action of everybody working together has really made the difference this year. Has the McKee administration broadcast any intent on their willingness to sign in past? No, we have not heard anything from the McKee administration. Any other questions? Okay, I think that does it. Thank you all for joining us today.